Moving along to this last set of pathologies, this is a CT abdomen with IV contrast in portal venous phase. Remember, we said that normal liver parenchyma tends to be pretty homogeneous most of the time. In this liver, the background liver is very heterogeneous and mottled. The pattern or appearance that we see here has been referred to as a nutmeg liver appearance for obvious reasons. Now, this pattern in the liver occurs as a result of venous congestion. And as a result, the portal flow is reduced in certain areas. The areas that look dark here are areas with reduced portal flow as a result of this quote unquote congestion. And there are three groups of conditions that you need to know that can lead to this appearance or classically lead to this appearance. Um, and these are all things that are commonly confused by trainees, so it's worth reviewing. First and relatively common is passive hepatic congestion. So these are patients with cardiac disease of some sort, usually right heart failure with increased central venous pressure that causes venous congestion in the liver and this nutmeg appearance in the liver parenchyma. So along with these parenchymal changes, you're also going to see in these patients dilated IVC and hepatic veins as you see here in this case. And this is the key finding here, in addition to the parenchymal findings, that indicates that you're dealing with passive hepatic congestion. You'll often commonly see a dilated right atrium, as you see here, or some other cardiac process. And then down the line, this can lead to findings of portal hypertension and cirrhosis. Second is Bud Chiari syndrome, also known as hepatic venous outflow obstruction. This is what happens when there is obstruction of the IVC or hepatic veins. There are a bunch of causes, but essentially you have outflow obstruction at the level of the hepatic veins centrally. This could be acute thrombosis or other chronic causes of obstruction, um, but again, you see this heterogeneous hepatic enhancement related to venous congestion in the liver, like in this case here uh, of Bud Chiari, um, and you see this nutmeg appearance of background liver. Um, this appearance can spare the caudate lobe as the caudate lobe drains directly into the IVC. Then over time, you can get atrophy of the peripheral liver with significant hypertrophy of the caudate lobe or caudate lobe enlargement for the exact same reason as we just described. So the caudate lobe drains directly into the IVC. This is a case of Bud Chiari as well. Notice the preserved and stronger enhancement of the caudate, which is very big, and relative atrophy and hypoattenuation of the rest of the liver. The key here is that contrary to passive hepatic congestion, you will not see very dilated IVC and hepatic veins or a cardiac cause. And instead, you may see a central venous cause like thrombosis, like in this case. So this arrow is pointing to a hepatic vein thrombus in this case. Or over time, in more chronic cases, the hepatic veins may be very narrow or even hard to see. Third is sinusoidal obstruction syndrome, or SOS formerly known as hepatic veno-occlusive disease. In SOS, you have some injury to the liver parenchyma that causes obstruction at the level of the small hepatic venules that you cannot actually see on imaging, but that leads to the same venous congestion in the liver. There are a number of causes of liver injury that can lead to SOS, but number one by far is bone marrow transplantation or hematopoeic stem cell transplantation. So remember, in passive hepatic congestion, we had venous congestion in the liver as a result of a cardiac cause. In Bud Chiari, it's at the level of the hepatic veins, thrombus, or some other cause that's obstructing the 
larger uh, outflow veins of the liver. And in SOS or sinusoidal obstruction syndrome, it's closer to the sinusoid at the level of these small venules, which you don't actually see, but you still see the consequences on imaging. So you end up with a similar pattern again, that nutmeg modeled heterogeneous appearance of the liver that is simply a result of venous congestion, and in this case, sinusoidal dilatation. And, with, and in patients with SOS, you can get findings of portal hypertension as well. But you won't see the engorged IVC in hepatic veins like passive hepatic congestion. You won't see a large venous thrombus or central cause like in Bud Chiari. Instead, in general, you only think of SOS in the appropriate clinical settings, most commonly in patients who you know had a history of stem cell transplantation. Of these pathologies that cause this appearance in the liver, again, the most common that you're going to see by far in clinical practice is passive hepatic congestion. The other two are less common, but are things that you should know about. Okay, so that's the end of this talk. Um, we covered a lot, but if you take only a few things away with you, I want it to be the following. One, know what normal liver looks like. Two, Know when you can call hepatic steatosis on CT, something that you should be thinking about in the back of your mind on every CT you look at when you look at the liver. Three, know the findings of cirrhosis and portal hypertension, also things you should be thinking about in the back of your mind when you're looking at a background liver. And four, have an approach to a very heterogeneous modeled nutmeg liver appearance and know the three categories of causes for that appearance. So these are the key things that you need to know about this topic to be able to interpret the background liver on CT in routine clinical practice. In the next video, we're going to introduce the topic of focal liver lesions.